Keenan Allen has been subject to many rumors throughout the offseason, whether it's being cut due to salary cap reasons or being traded. But after Tom Telesco's latest comments, Keenan Allen's not going anywhere. You are locked on Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for seven seasons, but this is our fifth season as a host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys so much, as always, for making this your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from. And today, David, we start with great news that Tom Telesco is basically Put it in stone that Keenan Allen will be staying put with the Chargers this season. And guess what? They're better for it. And they should be keeping him on the roster. And it seems like it's glad that we can hear it's time we can put that issue to bed. And he also maybe even intimated that they could trade down in this upcoming draft, which Tom Telesco literally has never done. But we do have to talk about an, a report coming out from the NFLPA who basically just put out an index of what teams are going through with their teams and the working conditions that they're under. The Chargers ranked 30th in the league. And something has to change. Some things are going to change because they're in temporary facilities. But there are some things that are kind of inexcusable that are happening right now and need to change as of this moment. And it seems like it already has started with the release of head athletic trainer because he did not get great reviews from the Chargers players when they got to speak anonymously. But today's episode of Lockdown Chargers is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. David, Tom Telesco did not have an official combine press conference right but he did get to speak with good morning football part of the nfl network and he got to give us some good news about keenan allen when he was quoted on it he said basically he's not going anywhere thank god we can finally put this big rumor to bed because this was one of the talks of the offseason and it's important to remind ourselves why they're having this conversation the chargers right. are 20 plus million dollars over the cap and Keenan Allen, if you cut him, you know, but with a post June one cut, it would be $19 million you could save on the cap. So that's a considerable amount of money. So when you look at it from a business perspective, obviously that makes some sense. But from the Chargers perspective, and according to Tom Telesco, after his comments in January saying, hey, are you considering the move of letting go of Keenan Allen for the cap space? He said, it's not tempting to me. Now it feels like after these latest comments that that is was and always has been his real opinion. Yeah, he was more vague about it for sure. And I mean, if he did want to trade Keenan Allen, obviously it's not great leverage to have teams think that you're going to cut him. But now it just feels like it's too far to go back. He has said yeah. too much to where like, I just feel like it's irreparable if you get rid of him or even if you trade him at this point with just how firm you've been in your stance. of How can anybody having- believe your word? He's an incredible football player. We have a great quarterback. We need weapons around him. There's never been any thought of cutting Keenan Allen in parentheses. So he's with us in between him, Mike Williams and Josh Palmer. We think that's three great receivers for a quarterback. So it just seems like this. I mean, the Chargers didn't get better, right? With that, without Keenan Allen, we've always kind of been consistent in saying they need to add to that. Right. But hearing Tom Tulsa say, Hey, he's our Andre Reed. He's our Charlie Joyner, right? Being a lifelong member of a team like that, it makes you feel good. Right. And the thing is, this will be still a conversation next off season as well, but it is nice to, you know, to know, hey, this dude's staying put because we know how much of a difference he makes when he's on the field. In five of the last six seasons, he's been incredibly healthy. And that's another part of this to kind of remember. Yes, he's over 30 now. Yes, it took him forever to come back from that lingering hamstring injury last year. But hopefully new athletic trainers will talk about, you know, some other things might have been part of that as well. But the one thing that is interesting about this as far as his other comments there were just, what he's saying about Mike Williams, Josh Palmer, and Keenan Allen, right? Having those three great wide receivers, like, is that kind of maybe intimating, okay, this probably isn't something we're going to draft in round one, or do you think that has an impact, David, knowing his thoughts on that, of kind of where they think the need is at wide receiver and where they could potentially draft it? 
it doesn't really do much for me. And the reason why is because Tom Telesco is the master of smoke and mirrors. You are not going to get much information out of him. You can't always take things he says literally. I think the comments about Keenan Allen you can take literally because he had reaffirmed that. But comments about things he's going to do in the draft or and how he feels about those type of positions, I don't really take much stock in it and how they're going to approach drafting that position because why are you going to give anybody any more information on what you are going to try to do there's no guarantee that that player that you want is going to be there so it just doesn't make any sense to give out any other information this early before the draft so I'm going to disagree with you but I think it's just going along with the same things I've already kind of thought about Tom Telesco and going along with the same things we've heard consistently from him and Brandon Staley throughout this offseason especially when asked about trying to get a faster receiver right like most of the time when they've been asked that they say hey well Mike Williams can get deep Hey, yeah. Josh Palmer can kind of get deep, you know, and we haven't really seen it, but he can kind of do it. And now we've heard, you know, Kellen Moore kind of go more in the direction of, okay, we think they're going to do it. Or even Brandon Staley saying, you know, hey, we're looking to make, you know, get difference makers and things like that. But the problem is, is I'm not convinced that they feel it's a great need. And that's the part where I think there's a little bit of disconnect because I truly believe him when he's saying, like, I feel good about where we're at. That doesn't mean they're not going to draft a wide receiver. Does it make it less likely they're going to take one at pick 21? I think it does, right? And it doesn't necessarily, you know, if you're getting a, a first-round receiver, I think you want both, right? You want a yak guy. You want a guy who can threaten the field deep. And those guys are really, really hard to find. Yeah. You can find guys with those singular aspects later on and on day two and rounds two and three. You can find a fast guy. You can find a yak guy. So it doesn't necessarily take away, you know, the Chargers' ability to kind of fill that need. Does it make it less likely in round one? To me, I think it kind of does. But there was another thing maybe he did let slip, David, because you're talking about smoke and mirrors, right? Maybe this was another part of that. But when he was asked about, you know, his draft picks, he was like, yeah, seven picks. Well, seven or eight picks, right? And they're not getting an eighth pick unless they're either trading a player for an additional pick. But more likely when talking about the draft, you're talking about trading down, trading back in the draft, which is something that Tom Telesco has never done. But boy, David, would I love it if he did. That's what I'm saying is I want to believe this when he says that I want to believe that he said this with intention of kind or of considering saying considering it at least yeah right? at least saying hey I'm going to give this a, a a second thought a third thought because like you just said the Chargers have never traded down under the tenure of general manager Tom Telesco so I want to believe it I want to see it because I feel like it could be advantageous especially where they're at at 21 in the draft because there's no guarantee that they're going to have a player ranked as their 21st best player that is worthy of a first round pick you know we've heard in previous years Tom Telesco said I only had about 15 or 20 players that I graded as a first round pick and you don't want to reach and so if you have an opportunity to trade back and accumulate more picks and uh, tr try to attack more needs more depth needs I don't think that's a bad idea at all and I think the way that this draft is playing out specifically with the positions that the Chargers really need the most, I think it would make sense because I don't think there's a lot of consensus on the edge position group or even the tight end position group or yeah. the wide receiver group. Like I think some of those guys could go a lot further and drop farther than we think. But there's also no guy at 21, at least wide receiver wise, where you're saying, hey, you can't pass up on that guy. There might not yeah. even be a single one of those guys in this draft where there's one guy where you're like, hey, if that dude makes it to 21, you're taking wide receiver in the draft, and he can be, make the argument he's the best player available there. There's a lot of receivers that you'd probably have close to second-round grades on, and I think when you're talking about kind of the wealth of edge rushers, the wealth of tight ends in this draft, like it's perfectly conceivable you could still get a great player there if you trade back to 26, 27, 28, yeah. somewhere like that, and get an additional top 100 pick to go attack one of those other needs because there might be a tight end that's worthy, you know, and can make a difference later on on day two. There might be a wide receiver and you can find that speed threat while still trying to address some of those other issues or even double dip on that position, right? There's a lot of things they could do with. I think trading back is almost always advantageous. We've never seen the Chargers do it under Tom Telesco, but there's a lot of things the Chargers need to work on. And those things came to light a little bit this week with a study done by the NFL Players Union ranking the different free agent destinations, basically ranking all the teams in the NFL based on what those players think of where they're at and the conditions they're working under, whether it's their athletic training staff, whether it's the weight room, blocker room, how the teams are treating their family. Unfortunately for the Chargers, they got pretty low remarks in all regards. And we're going to have to talk about that and things that must get improved right now, right? Coming up right after this. But I need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to you 
by FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and also the official sports betting host of, of Locked On Chargers and Locked On Podcast Network, the official betting sponsor. And right now, guys, it's a great time to look up FanDuel and download it because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's super secure, and easy to use. And right now, guys, NBA is midway through. It's a great time to get in on the action. You can find so many ways to bet with player props, player points, rebounds, assists, things like that, or even more unique bets like the two-by-three a player getting two three-pointers in the first three minutes. And hey, if you only like to bet on football, you can do that as well. You can bet on the NFL draft, who's going to be the first player taken. And you can even make some NFL futures, the Chargers right now, plus 2,000 to win to the 2023 Super Bowl. So a lot you can do with FanDuel, and you can also do the same game parlay, which really lets you multiply your bets with bets on the same game. So don't miss out on your chance to get that no sweat first bet right now, guys, up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Well, we talked about the good news, didn't they, David? The bad news is, is a lot of players around the NFL have been enlightened to which teams and which organizations are the best ones to play for from a working condition standpoint. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about the NFL PA, basically having all the players anonymously over 1,300 NFL players rank from you know A to F what they think of the conditions that they're working in with their team. Not every player knows what it's like in other teams, especially rookies, you know, and guys on their rookie contracts. Now they do, because now this index has been put out there, right? The Chargers ranked 30th in the team guide there in a converted office building as a temporary facility. And according to reports, the permanent training facility should be ready in 2024. Unfortunately, David, as of right now, it looks like from the outside looking in, and I mean, probably in actuality that the Chargers are one of the worst teams to play for as far as the working conditions. It's all in the data, Daniel, and the data for this particular subject is not very flattering for the Chargers. Tra- treatment of fa- families, D-, minus, food service, nutrition, F, weight room, C-, minus, strength coaches, got a good grade there, grade there eight mi- A-, minus, but the training room, F-, minus, training staff, C-, minus, which was one of the worst in the league, Locker room D minus and team travel a B. And overall, that's, you know, like you said, 30th out of 32 teams. That is absolutely atrocious and should be extremely, extremely embarrassing. Well, and this is where their ranks are 27th, 29th, 27th, 17th, 30th, 30th, 28th. The only thing they're above average at, according to these reports, are team travel. The player saying, hey, you know, we get a lot of space on the, you know, planes we get to. Everyone has a chance to kind of lay down and things like that. But they also said they take the same, you know, plane that they use with the equipment on board. So it takes them forever to get off. And the logistics are really the only thing that we're dragging that part down. But as far as the rest of it goes, David, we're talking about not enough hot and cold tubs, right? The players don't have enough cold tubs. They were described as gross in the training facility. That's something you can change right now. The the cleanliness should be something that whether you're in a temporary facility or not is something you have control over, right? Like that's all things like that. The showers, not enough showers. Players having to wait in line and wait long amounts of time just to be able to get in the shower. Like these are all things that players, if they're trying to decide between two teams, right, it could make a difference. And I think the ones that disturb me the most, right, treatment of the players' families. One of 14 teams without a family room at the stadium, that's part of the Rams, right? That's their stadium, but still – Offering child care on game days is something that the Chargers do, but when their players are asked about how these teams are treating their families, they're giving the Chargers a D minus or yeah, D minus in that regard. Like that can't be good when kind of what you've been putting out there is hey, family, we love relationships, we care about you, we care about not just you, but also your family as well. And then this, David, the nutrition, right? One of the big complaints, not enough room in the cafeteria. That's something that can be fixed, right? And that takes more time. They can't necessarily just fix that right now. But Quality of food ranked 29th. This is something you can control, David. This is how much money you're putting into the nutrition that your players are, you know, eating on a daily basis. And the Chargers are one of the worst teams in the NFL. Like the Chargers are going to move into a new facility. That's going to raise a lot of these grades. It's a state of the art facility. It should raise them. These are things that don't get changed by that. These are things that the Chargers are letting happen right now. 
Yeah, that's why the, the biggest thing for me is the, the treatment of the families. That, that's got to get corrected immediately. Like that that should never, ever be an, an, an issue because, you know, whenever you're supported and whenever you're supporting the family and you're going out there doing your job, I think it always feels a lot better when the company that you're work, working for is also supporting your family as well and really kind of truly feels um, and understands what they need and that you're providing what they need. That's something that can be corrected immediately. There's That's not affected by the salary cap. They got to get that fixed like right now they need to get that fixed yesterday for the the food food situation same thing i mean open up your your checkbook i mean uh, bring a new staff in make sure you're talking to these players so you understand what they need so you're providing exactly what they need this has nothing to do with anything else than making sure that they are being able to perform at their peak ability and that means getting the right nutrition in their body so they can go out there and perform and the only thing worse than this is the Cardinals who actually pay have their players pay for the food or some of their meals Ooh. and uh, pay for food when they're coming in the offseason. So it could be wow. worse. But when you're 30th, it can't be much worse, right? Not and Tom Lesko, when talking about the new facility, said this. Being able to create a building that can grow with technological advances, especially in regard to nutritional needs, strength and performance, injury prevention, medical treatment, and game planning is crucial to sustained success. Everyone knows the margin between wins and losses in the NFL is razor thin. Any advantage you can create for your coaches and your players, you'll take it. The Chargers aren't taking it, right? Like, it's crazy. I mean, the athletic trainer, right, that basically got ripped in this C-minus towards the bottom of the league as far as what their players thought about him. And that might have already changed something because they already got rid of, you know, Damon Mitchell. So, like, that is something that we're going to talk about next is, you know, will this kind of shame change things for the Chargers? It may have already kind of started. And there's a lot of reasons to think it's going to get better. But a lot of these things aren't getting better right now, David. And you have to wonder if this is going to affect free agent decisions. Brandon Steele, we should get a lot of credit for the guys he brought in last season, especially the lower deal guys. The big money is always going to talk, David. But yeah. This, I mean, now that players see this, now that players have something to compare it to, if it's close, you have to think it's going to make an impact. If if I'm a free agent and I'm weighing my options out there and I'm trying to see who's going to give me the best deal, and now I'm armed with this amount of information about all of the potential workplaces out there in the NFL, it is definitely going to play an impact in my decision. I see these rankings by the Chargers. I'm going to be a whole lot less likely to want to sign there because, hey, they're not going to feed me right. They're not going to take care of my body correctly. They're not going to take care of my family the right way. These are all things that I'm going to be very, very concerned with. And yes, it would definitely impact my decision. And you have to expect that it's going to impact players' decisions as well. And the thing is, it's like, it's the things you can control, right? It's the things that, you know, make, I think Chargers fans wish they had the super rich owners, right? Like the Jerry Joneses and the Walton families of the world where like cost is not an issue. And the Broncos had their fair share of low marks and you know, a lot of prestigious franchises had their dirty laundry aired in this as well. But there's no salary cap on how much money you're putting into food, right? Not at all. There's no salary cap on how many tickets you're buying for players, families, for games and things like that and how you're handling those situations. There's no salary cap on buying more tubs or having the staff to be able to keep the medical facilities and the training facilities clean. That stuff, it's just you're, it's just negligence to a certain extent. It shouldn't right? even be something we're talking about. Cleanliness? No, it's, it's we're talking about it's cleanliness? Like that, that's not even something that should be a figment of your imagination when we're talking right. about a professional sports franchise, Daniel. Cleanliness. I mean, and just like... Being able, like, I think, you know, the naivete of just thinking, hey, when things happen behind closed doors, like, a player gets hurt, you're not thinking he has to wait for the training table to open up because they don't have enough training tables. You're not thinking about the fact that 57% of the players think there aren't enough physical therapists on the team to service everybody as they're trying to get some of these dudes back on the field. You just assume those things are happening, right? Yeah. Now you're getting told here it's that not. they're not. You know, yeah. and that they're the bottom of the league in a lot of these regards. The good news is, is at least as of right now, it seems like the Chargers are at least committed to change. Hey, you know, you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. There's only so much you can do. There will be a, a big part of this will be where are they ranking these things next year? Now that they can see everyone else and how everyone else is doing it and how other players feel about that, you know, what's around them and their surroundings and how they're being taken care of. What is this going to look like next year? Will we see positive change? At least the one thing we have seen is it seems like the Chargers are getting closer and more committed, at least, to improving a lot of these qualities. Because guess what? These qualities and things like this and rumors like this were around long before the Chargers moved to Los Angeles. So there's only so much you can blame for the relocation itself. 
The good news is it seems like they might be on the right road to trying to do things the right way. But we're going to get into that coming up after this. One of the biggest places, David, where the Chargers can and will make a huge leap as far as these lists go are with their new facility, right? They have a new facility opening up in 2024 that should raise a lot of these grades. I mean, these are the things yeah. that should be directly impacted by it, right? Much better weight room, which yeah. right now it's, you know, in an office building. Right. The treatment of the facilities is something you'd have to think that you would want to keep up with with a brand new facility. The training room, the locker room, yeah. right? All of those things should be dramatically improved as soon as 2024. And I think that's at least somewhat of a good start. It's a step in the right direction. It is for sure. And yes, you got to imagine that all of those things are going to get improved right away. They're going to be able to take this feedback and they're going to be able to say, hey, guys, next year. I mean, I got you, man. We're going to be stepping into a great facility. Everything's going to look great. And hopefully, you know, they're not just taking this information and saying, hey, guys, we have a plan. It's no, we need a plan to fix these things right now as well. It is. I mean, and and the thing is, these are all the things, you know, that can't be changed right now. Like they're not right. going to have an entirely new weight room when they open up training camp this year. They're still going to be at some, you know, random kind of practice field in Costa Mesa. Like right. that's next to like a junior <laughs> college. Like that's still going to be what it is right and i mean it's going to be a lot better once they have you know five thousand can seat five thousand people for training camp and practice yes. and things like that and you know they have you know state of the art everything because when things are brand new i mean you have to hope they're not cutting corners on that i mean everything's going to oh, be yeah. pretty new the floorboards aren't going to be coming up like they are in arizona but guess <laughs> no what? particle board here yeah you know <laughs> it doesn't matter like you can't you know compare yourself like you can't feel good about 30 ever right but right. the nice thing no. is is like them doing that, getting the brand new facility, you know, the amount of resources they're putting into making that a state of the art facility is something that's going to really, I think, give them a big jump in these rankings in a yeah. couple of years. Right. Because that won't yeah. be until the 2024 rankings, not after the 2023 season. Right. That's definitely so like true. A couple yep. of years from now is when we're going to see if those things jump. But I think it is at least showing a commitment to improve a lot of these things. Yeah. And one thing that they're already committed to improving on, and you have to wonder if it's because of this report, is their new head athletic trainer, right? Someone who had yeah. been around for 24 seasons, who'd been that head athletic trainer for the Chargers for six seasons. He was released, and he wasn't released with the other coaches in kind of the first wave of everything, right? He was released pretty recently, and we all kind of said, hey, that should be a good thing because the Chargers had a, a rash of injuries and things like that. And now we're wondering, hey, how much of that is the nutrition? How much of that is these other things? But... If it really is a shame thing, it means it's already kind of starting to work. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it seems like you, you can kind of feel like they have had this report for a while. And they're just like, hey, guys, we're about to put this thing, make this thing public. So, you know, we're going to uh, give you this information early. And it seems like they did act on that information. And, and so that is a good thing. Is, at least you know, in one able, way. Sure. Right. In one way. Right. It's good that you can at least be faced with a lot of critical information because believe me, there is a, a ton in this report. And it's another thing to be able to take that feedback and to be able to correct what you made, you know, the mistakes that you made and the things that you need to improve on. So at least you can feel encouraged that they are taking steps to answer those things that they are being called out for in this report. Well, when you sign a new guy, you know, because that's the thing is we don't know who's taking it over yet. So it's right. hard to say, hey, we know for sure it's going to improve. You have to hope that they're at least willing to kind of loosen up the purse strings a little bit a little bit more after something like this you know especially after basically this. report like yeah. this comes out but give them full autonomy from yeah. more training tables more ice baths right. hey what do you, you need, know right they're one of six teams in the nfl that doesn't have a steam room or a sauna i don't think that can change until 2024 one of two like, teams that don't have either oh yeah one crazy. of two teams not one of four teams right so like yeah. it, it's it doesn't happen like this a lot of places and that isn't something that's going to be changed, but that is something that is going to affect even this new head athletic trainer. But I think the biggest frustration, at least in the last couple of years is, Hey, we get it. Guys get hurt. People thinking that a new athletic trainer is just going to mean, you know, the charge will magically be a lot healthier. Be like healthier, it doesn't yeah. always work like that. Right. But at the same time, first of all, it's hard to get any worse. Right. Yeah. Secondly, the bigger frustration has been getting the guys back on the field. The bigger frustration yes. has been, hey, we keep seeing these timelines. We know what it usually takes for a player playing at the same position, playing in the same league in the NFL, takes them to get back. Yet we keep seeing these guys go well past what that usually is, right? I mean, you even think back a couple of years ago with like Michael Badgley, who ended up missing like eight games, right? 
something like that when he was something they didn't even put him on injured reserve for because they thought he was yeah. going to be out, you know, a couple of weeks. Like that has been the main frustration. And the head athletic trainer is going to help with that. But you know what else is going to help? Giving these players better food, more yeah. training tables, having enough physical therapists to actually service all these guys right. and have 50%, all the guys. Fifty-seven percent feel they have enough PTs. That's a really, really small percentage. So not having enough staff to get these guys back on the field when there has been several examples of guys like you just mentioned not getting back on the field anywhere closer anywhere close to the timelines that they were originally given for those injuries just makes you think like after this information comes out, like you are going to be forced to make changes and hopefully all positive and for the better. And a lot of times, I mean, especially today, like the, when you have billionaires, right. And, and you're talking about owners and, and, and guys who are kind of untouchable in a lot of ways. Yeah. Sometimes shame is the only way to do it. I mean, maybe oh, yeah. you're Daniel Snyder, right? And even the shame of it isn't enough to sell your team. But, like, <laughs> for a lot of – like, this is going to burn Dean Spanos. Like, oh, you yeah. have to think, like, this is going to really upset him and embarrass him, right? This is an embarrassing, embarrassing thing right here. And it's not something he's ever re- – you know, it's not the first time he's been accused of it, right? No. And this is also something that, you know, happened in their time in San Diego's. But this is the first time it's been – this clear this right. out in the open there's no hiding and, and i think the thing is though sometimes that's how things change that, and i absolutely. do think that that level of shame right combined with the multitude of things who can that can be fixed right now like yeah. i think there's a good chance that this shame this embarrassment is going to lead to better food i would hope this season right it's yes. going to be led to better treatment of these players families this season because if not you're going to be at the same spot next year on this list Right. Sweeping changes is what you have to hope for when this amount of negative information comes out about your organization and about things that you can correct immediately. So when you're armed with this information and you don't make these corrections, then it's just negligence. Then it's sure. okay. Now I know you don't care about me and, and me as a player or my family and how I'm going to go perform. So I'm definitely not going to want to spend any time with your organization. So this is the test. Now it's now you're armed with the information. What are you going to do with that information? How are you going to correct it? And how quickly are you going to get it correct? Because the only thing stopping you literally is how much money and how many resources you're willing to put into it. That's the only thing stopping them. That's right? It. Like they, they can choose like, I mean, there's no way if you're running an NFL team, your cash flow can be that poor to no. where you can't upgrade these things immediately. Like you're investing in your long term. You're going to have to shell a little bit more out in the meanwhile until you can show people with your brand new facilities, until you can show people, you know, your neighbors with the Lakers and the Kings and you're doing it the right way, like the teams that have been in L.A. the longest. Like, right. Do it now. <laughs> right now. Fix it now. Because guess what? Like. It's going to look a lot better next year and you have full control over that. And a lot of these teams are going to be trying to improve as well. But right now, it doesn't seem like the Chargers are a good team to play for. They have a lot of things working for them. Players want to play for Brandon Staley. Players want to live in Los Angeles. They don't necessarily want to pay California taxes, which is also working against them. Yeah. But like they've been able to get these guys. And I think that's a credit. Right. But like how many guys has it kept them from keeping and retaining? Right. How right. many guys have left because of these back conditions? What is kind of the banter when guys are calling Chargers players and saying like, hey, bro, what's it like there? What are these guys saying? Right. Because it's hard to believe right now that when they're talking about the facilities and then the treatment of their players and the food they're eating, that they could be saying very nice things. Right. And it's hard to think like we've talked about. It's just hard to think that that isn't going to have any impact impact because these players never had this before. They never had the index. They've never had it laid out so clear. The impact, the full ramifications of it, we may never know. We may never yeah. know how much has affected them before. We don't know how much it's going to affect them in this upcoming free agent period. But it is interesting that neither one of Brand Staley or Tom Telesco had, you know, full blown availability to talk about this, to answer for this. That you know, Dean Spanos isn't out here saying something about it. It's very fresh. They'll have a chance to do it. Will they? Or will they kind of hide from it? I think you should get out in front of it. And I think you should tell people, hey, it hasn't been good enough. We're taking accountability for that. And the only thing I can tell you right now is that it gets better starting right now. Anything yeah. less than that is a failure to Chargers fans out there, honestly. It's, and it's a failure to Chargers players because the only thing stopping them is how much money they're willing to put into it. And if they're too cheap to do that, then they kind of deserve what they get from it. But that is going to do it for today's show. 
We will be back with you guys as always tomorrow, though, for free, available on all platforms. As long as you're subscribed to the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel, you can make sure you never miss shows like this one. And make sure you're following, you know, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those places as well. Tomorrow, we will be getting into Fan Mail Friday. So you want to make sure you hit us up at Locked on LAC and get your uh, questions in the comments there. You can hit us up in the YouTube comments. You can also hit us up in the Apple Podcast reviews. You want to leave a five-star rating and put your question in there. There's a great chance your question will get on the show as well. We will bribe you. I don't care. But you can also call into the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. And anyone who's called in before earlier this week, and we were going to do it earlier, anyone who put their question on Twitter, those ones are still very, very much in play, and we'll definitely be using some of those from when we put that post out on, I believe, Tuesday. So we will get to all those, but to make sure you never miss the show, you can also follow our social media. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and David Drugmeyer on Twitter at DrotalkSD. His DMs are always open, and we post the show to all of our accounts every day. You can also find us on our Locked on Chargers Facebook page, and you can also find us at Locked on Chargers on Instagram. Somebody already had a great question about whether the Chargers should double dip on speedy receivers because what happened after they lost Jalen Guyton last year That is something we will definitely be answering tomorrow. But thank you guys again for making us your first listen. If you need a second listen, make sure to go check out the Locked On NFL Draft Show with Keith Sanchez and Damian Parsons. They will give you all of the best hidden gems and sleepers that could potentially change your team. Find the next Jamari Sawyer and guys like that on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. And both shows are available wherever you get your podcast from. So we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.